This video will assist students in the nursing program about accessing CINAHL and other nursing databases. As with any library searching, begin at the library's homepage. If you are not here, you can go to any UNCP page, click on Quick Links, you'll see the library, click on it, and it will bring you to this page. You've got several ways to access the databases. One is click on Resources, click Databases, <coughs> excuse me, and then you see we have databases arranged both by subject and by title. We also have a list of popular databases. And if you go to Nursing and Medicine here under Subjects, you will see we have a, a listing of some of the best bets. And Send All Complete is the top one. Just click on it. If you're off campus, you will see a login screen pretty much like this pop up. Just put in your name and password and it will take you on into the database. Now, when you come into CINAHL, you can also select other databases. And again, it may depend upon your topic um, as to if you want to select other databases. Just click on Choose Databases and you'll see a listing here. If you're doing anything about patient attitudes, their mental health, we have the APA Psych articles and Psych Info you may want to add. Um, you'll see some of the other health databases also listed here. Health Source Consumer Edition. If you're looking for academic resources, I would not click that, but you see you have a nursing and academic collection. And you can simply click on these boxes boxes uh, to add those and I'm just going to click on several of them because I don't know what I'm searching for yet and I'm going to add in academic search complete and here's your databases. I know COVID-19 is a big topic right now so I'm going to go ahead and type it in and notice it comes up or also it has other options and I can click on that and I'll feed those in. And if you've seen the keyword video, you'll know that's how you search. Um, I cannot just type in my main research sentence or question and get results. I need to break it down into keywords. So let's say I am looking at COVID-19 and children. I'm going to type in the word child with an asterisk behind it. The asterisk will look for all possible endings. And then I'm just going to click on search. I keep my searches simple to start with. Notice I have over 1,600 articles. If you need scholarly or peer reviewed because I selected those other databases, some of these are not. Select that. And notice my number, I lost roughly 400, 500 journals. Now, also with these, usually what I do is they come up 20 per screen. I usually scan through them. And I look at my title. I look at my subjects here and notice COVID-19 is a subject. I look for those and look for any key terms that stand out with me. Um, and one of the things what you can do to even narrow this further is notice you have subject major heading. These are your medical headings, your mesh headings. And notice I have several. Now, notice I have coronavirus, COVID-19, and coronavirus infections. All of these may relate to what I'm looking for. If I click on show more, it will bring them up in this area and I can actually select multiple ones. If I did that in the other screen, it would just look for the, it would automatically advance when I clicked in one to do that one. This one actually, this type of search actually puts the word or OR between these terms. So it's looking for coronavirus or COVID-19 or coronavirus infections within these subject headings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on update and I should be down to under 200. You see my results now. 
If I wanted to, I could also go back and click on another one. Or notice I have age. If I'm looking for child or a certain age group, I can do that. If I'm looking for a gender, it will even do geography, but this gets a little, sometimes it gets a little interesting. Or if I want to limit it down to a search, a particular database, I could do that. So this is how you search. Now, with any EBSCO database, you can click on the title and it will open up to give you a fuller view of the record. Notice it gives me my major subjects. These are your mesh headings, your ma uh, major medical subject headings. It gives you your minor. And these are the links. So if I wanted to restart a search, I could click on one of these to do that. My terms are in bold within my abstract. It gives you more further information. Now, since this is full text, I can click here to pull it up. I can add it to a folder. Um, there's a video about creating it and folders. If I add it to this folder, it's a temporary folder. Excuse me, I got forgot to turn my email off. I can add it to a folder and my folder up here opens and I can mail, email everything at one time. Go back to my results list. Say so you want to add this one. See how my folder, the plus folder turns gold. And to email those, I just go up here to folder, click on it, select all, and click over here to email, and I can email these items. Now, notice, also notice I can send myself a citation format. Good news, bad news with that. Uh, let me go back and show you. When you click on a title, here you'll see the word cite over here and if I click on it it will bring up all those citation formats up again and I can scroll down to view it now actually as far as uh, this one looks pretty good for APA except for there's some capitalization issues here in this title but anytime you use a citation from a database verify it Verify that it is correct, especially with the capitalization and other format issues. I, I teach a section of Lib 1000 and, a, and Lib 5000, and I tell my students my first three rules of citations using databases is verify, verify, and verify. So please do that. Please do that because it's simple, but it can save you points. But you can email these. So if I go back here and again, all I have to just put my email address in. Tell it what citations format. And send it. Now, also, let me go back to my search screen. One of the things that. Um, click on you search. One of the things that some of the things that just in Sino, let me. Go to choose databases and deselect some of these. Oops, except for send all, excuse me. Send all, as you'll see, will have some various things up here. Oops, I must still have show all. Let me unclick that one. Send all, notice it'll have send all subject headings and these other types of information up here that you may want to use. If you know the subject heading, you can begin here um, and take a look at it. Typically, I start with, I don't start with this, I start with the basic keyword search to go that way. Uh, like the COVID-19, and then click on either a subject heading along my dissertation, excuse me, my subject to source terms, my major subject headings, or I click on one in a record. And also notice you have major evidence-based care sheets. I 
I don't know if there's one for COVID yet or not. No, but I mean, th these are just, you know, there probably will be one at one point in time. This is what it will bring it up. This is the one for Crohn's disease. I just clicked on it at random. PDF. And these are things that provide quick overviews. For it. So you may want to, you know, it gives you a quick overview of it. So you may want to take a look at those. And those, as you see, they can be emailed, downloaded, and saved. Let me close all tabs. Let me go back here, go back to my results list. And notice it says more. There's also things called quick lessons. And again, these can be used. Let's see if there's one for COVID. No. But, I mean, you can select one of these, and what it will do is provide information that you make and print out for a, for a patient. I'm just going to click on the PDF full text. Description again. Facts and figures. Risk symptoms. Risk factors, symptoms. Maybe this is not so much for a patient, but it gives you information. All this can be helpful. Uh, so be aware of this when you click on this. This is not exactly peer-reviewed literature, but again, it provides you with information that may be necessary. And if you have any questions about this, um, you can always go to the library's homepage. There's the Ask a Librarian chat feature here, or up at top, there's the Ask a Librarian link that will provide you again with the reference email. We actually do are doing video chat, so you can click here for that. It's also off off the homepage, or you can just send us an email. And we'll get back to you. But please email us if you run into issues. You can email me. I am listed under contact us. And that's me. That's the face that goes to the voice. Now you see why I have a future in radio, not television. And also I'm the second ball man on the line. So anyway, you can contact us and we will get back and assist you. So if you have any questions, Please contact us. Thank you.